Welcome everybody to today's episode of the Pixel Drone Show. You can watch the Pixel Drone Show on YouTube or listen to it on the various podcast platforms. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our show and share it with your friends so we can grow the subscri uh, subscribers uh, uh, base. And today we're very excited to have Wayne Baker, the Director of Public Safety and Integration from DJI in our show. And Wayne joined DJI in about, I think, November 2019. And he has worked closely together with one of our previous guests, uh, Romeo Dersher. Uh, in the field of first responders. And Wayne now carries the torch to promote and educate people about the benefits that drones can offer to our society, especially as the unmanned aircraft have become invaluable tools for search and rescue crews. Uh, Wayne is also maybe even first and foremost a retired fire chief. So Wayne, uh, would you like us to, uh, to address you with uh, Chief Baker or just Wayne? <laughs> oh, you can call me Wayne. I, I get chief a lot. Uh... Yeah, and as we say here in Texas, you can call me anything you want, just not late for dinner. So, ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, maybe maybe to start off this interview, it's good to uh, kind of go back in time a little bit, and uh, if you can tell us a little bit about your backgrounds and what you've done before joining DJI, and also uh, how you got into the whole drone industry, I think that would be a, a good place to start, perhaps. Sure. Um, I'm going to go back a little bit, uh, actually quite a ways, so I don't want to make this too long, but uh, uh, I started out um, in my uh, when I was 16 in a city right on the Long Beach, uh, Orange County border, um, and I was a, a police explorer from the age of 16 uh, until about uh, 19, I moved back to Texas and uh, started out as a volunteer firefighter and really my goal my plan uh, i was a navy brat my dad was in the navy my whole life and i wanted to go into the navy and i was mm -hmm. looking at the naval academy <clears throat> and it and one of the things on your applications to service academies is that you do community service and things like that so that's where i started volunteering as a firefighter uh, i was in college uh, to build up my grades to, to make that better uh, before I applied. And I told my dad, uh, you know, I was three weeks into being a volunteer firefighter. And I told him, you know, it's a lot of fun, but I wouldn't want to do it as a career. And uh, famous last words, uh, because about three months in, I decided this was going to be my career. Uh, so I did, uh, did a lot of different things before I, I finally uh, dropped out of college, went to fire academy and paramedic school. Uh, I, I was a police dispatcher. I was an EMT on an ambulance. Uh, and then I went to paramedic school and fire academy and uh, started my paid career as a firefighter. And um, so overall, uh, you know, uh, in the fire service, I did 26 years between career and volunteer. Um, the last 10 as a full-time chief of actually a volunteer department. And um, that what makes that interesting is what we were able to accomplish with drones as a small volunteer <laughs> department, um, you know, with myself and a civilian pilot, Garrett Brill, and, and what we were able to uh, really push the limits on. So, yeah, yeah. so you're That's you're the. You're at the forefront of um, seeing a lot of development, you know, with drones, especially with DJI. What are some of the recent development that you've seen in terms of how drones are being used with first responders that really excite you? You know, there's, um, you know, we, we, back in, I'll start real quick with back in 2014, what, one of the things we were doing to 2015, 2014, we were having a lot of flooding in um, Texas. And so that's where we started with looking at being able to use a drone not only as a video tool but as a tool for delivery um and then now what i've seen as we progress yes the 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 ability to find people has been uh, enhanced tremendously uh, making people safer on fires uh, but to to get to spe specifics about your question um what i've really seen lately is a lot of the informational aspect of of the tool that has has begun to grow and i and i don't mean just giving that situational awareness um, but information to help 
pre-plan and prevent a disaster or information that um, keeps an incident from occurring uh, or making an in a situation worse. And, and what I've called that a lot is uh, passive rescue, something I've been looking into more and more. We can quantify the actual rescues uh, because we know when a drone has specifically been used on an event to uh, save a life or mitigate that risk. Um, but those times when we don't even know that a drone has been used to uh, prevent something from uh, breaking that chain of events that may have caused another injury, um, just case in point, um, we'll never know that someone going to do an inspection on a power line would have climbed up there and had an emergency. Yep. And instead of putting a human up there, we used a drone. We'll never know we broke that chain of events. Um, and that, that to me is great because, as, as I said a long time uh, as a firefighter, the best fire I ever had is the one I never had to fight. Uh, and, and that speaks to our fire prevention programs that, that we had uh, and still have to this day and are continuing to improve in the fire service. So um, for me, um, the more drones have been integrated into that safety and risk mitigation um that's better than the active uh you know response yeah anything that can save a life and it's always hard to find good statistics to say well drones prevented this loss of life because because it never happened so um a little follow-up question on this what what do you think at the moment is the most common use of uh, drones in the first responder community and this may not be an easy question to answer i would say it is that an enhanced situational awareness um you know uh specifically like chulavis does uh drone's first responder program as well as um you know clovis and others that are that are doing this because that situational awareness that can be immediately brought to anyone responding to that incident, um, you know, can make game changing decisions before they even arrive uh, to, to, you know, we, we do know we say seconds do count in public safety and to have that information before I arrive, uh, just to give you an idea in my area, you know, if I call for additional units, it could take anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour to get some of those units to me. So, you know, if it takes me six minutes to get to the scene and then another couple of minutes to make that decision, um, you know, we're, we're, we're reducing that time frame for, for response. So, um, you know, uh, it's situational awareness on uh, mass gatherings that we've seen uh, just to help everybody be safer, not just the responders, has, has been another thing. Um, that's, that's so, outstanding. Yeah. So last week we had uh, Charles Werner, uh, the director of drone responders, uh, on the show, and we asked uh, the same question as well. Uh, and we're curious to hear your opinion also on this. Is in, in your mind, like, what is the ideal or the perfect drone for first responders? Like, what kind of features uh, would you put on top of the list? Uh, that you look for in a new drone? Oh my goodness. Um, I, I would say, first of all, ease of use. Um, I, I mean, that's, uh, it's pretty understandable to say, but one that can be rapidly deployed um, with the fewest steps that, that could be critical steps for someone to miss in a, you know, when you're in a dynamic, um, rapidly evolving situation, especially where, where lives are on the line. Um, I need as few steps as possible to get that drone in the air. Um, and I need as few steps as possible that if I miss one, I, I've created a critical failure um, and could cause an incident. So, um, you know, sensors and everything else are, are important. But to me, that is one of the the, the most important things I look at as far as for public safety drones, how quickly can I safely get it in the air? 
Yeah. W what is your view on uh, tethered drones uh, that can stay up indefinitely, basically? I mean, it was, uh, Charles pointed out that, for instance, battery life and flight time are, are kind of crucial for drones as well, and, and so are uh, thermal cameras. So we ended up talking about uh, tethered drones that uh, might not have the range of motion, but at least they can provide that situational awareness indefinitely. Uh, is, is that something that you see uh, becoming more, I wouldn't say popular, but more useful? or? Absolutely. Um, I, you know, we look at the Surfside incident uh, ongoing yeah. right now. Um, you know, I, I've been at collapse incidents like that before, and it's one thing to have that mobility of a drone on a, again, on a dynamic environment where I have a rapidly evolving fire or we have a missing person that we're trying to locate. Um, yeah. But when you're talking an incident that is, is, there are a lot of hazards to responders and it is dynamic, but at a slower pace as that pile changes, as they're removing debris um, and searching, um, having that stationary 24 hour vigil, because that operation is 24 hours, mm -hmm. as I understand. And so having that uh, ability to remain in place and, and monitor them is crucial because, um, you know, something like that, the last thing, well, really any incident, the last thing you need is coming in for a battery swap. Uh, and, and this has happened to me, coming in for a battery swap at the moment uh, something important is occurring is is the wrong time to be doing a battery. And, and, and it never fails. Murphy's flying right there beside you to have that happen. Um, yeah. And that's where, you know, tether drones are a sought after solution. And, and it is very important that... Uh, good ones are found yeah now dji recently or not super recent but but not too long ago uh, launched the dji method to enterprise advanced can you tell us a little bit about uh, the reasons for introducing this enterprise drone so soon after the original method to enterprise and also can you tell us about uh, how successful the drone has been in terms of sales and the kind of feedback that you guys have gotten uh, on this drone I would say a big part of getting it out uh, sooner than, than we probably anticipated was um, the, you know, we listen to public safety uh, all the time and their needs and uh, the need for a higher uh, quality thermal uh, and better zoom capabilities was, was getting crucial, you know, and, and, and as we look to not as much uses during the pandemic, but during, um, you know, a lot of the uh, protests going on throughout the country, uh, various protests for various reasons, um, you know, uh, it, it was pretty critical to get this equipment to public safety uh, as, as quick as we can so that, again, it's not just about protecting the responders, but also protecting um, those are, that are involved in that incident uh, and, and keeping the, the entire mass gathering safer. So uh, that, that was a big part of it. And, um, and I apologize, the second part to your question was... Oh, the, the kind of feedback uh, that DJI has received on the launch of the DJI Method to Enterprise Advanced. Like, has it been <laughs> much better received than previous drones or what are, yeah, just the general feedback that you guys uh, have gotten? Yeah, there, there's been a lot of um, really good feedback about it. Uh, I, I myself was, um, when I was able to get uh, uh, my unit in, was, was really impressed with the capabilities that um, we now have in that one unit. What I like about it is, um, you know, it, it's hard to get one drone that can do it all. And, uh, but when you can put as many capabilities into one unit, uh, as as we have in the Mavic series, um, that's been really a, a game changer to to help protect and save lives. And so we've we've had a lot of good feedback from customers uh, across the country. Um, and you know, um, again, we've we've had the dual and we've had the zoom, and they were the, the zoom is one that that a lot of departments. Um, I, I was myself surprised how many departments I hear love the Zoom as a go-to tool. Um, the, the Duo, when it first came out, was, was good because we didn't have that in a small platform drone. Um, yeah. But now, when compared to the capabilities of the advanced, 
um, you know, it's still a good product for those that have it and, and um, have the limited budget. But for that advanced, the capabilities in a smaller platform at a, at a lower cost have been really great for departments that, that don't have that funding that maybe some others might to put into larger platform aircraft and sensors. So, um, I, and, and I, I don't know exactly on uh, how well the sales numbers are, but I do know from, from what I've heard from some of our dealers that it's been a very sought after uh, product by, uh, by their customers. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to call it the M2EA. And how does it compare to yeah. some of the other blue SUAS drones, um, just as far as features and price are concerned? You know, um, I, I'm not too sure on pricing. I apologize. I'm not, uh, as I tell people all the time, I know what I do does revert to sales, but uh, my goal, my mission, especially for the company, is to find ways that we can get these into the hands of responders to um, better save not only their lives, but the public. And uh, I've, I've had the chance finally recently to <clears throat> see the competitor products out there we have, uh, especially some of the blue UAS products. And, um, you know, there's there's different features, you know, for the most part, and, I, and I've said this for a little while, drones for the most part are, are all about the same and can have about the same capabilities. There's just certain maybe third party products or features that one company may have that um, another may not. And, um, you know, I've been impressed with some of the Brink drones that I've seen. They've got uh, some really great products. Uh, I know Skydio and um, uh, their uh, autonomy uh, is is um, really good. Um, we're still in giving that pilot um, the ultimate control, not saying the others don't. Uh, but of, of the mission and, um, you know, I know we've got really good sensors, but, uh, I caution people also all the time is sensors only work so far. So, um, you know, I, I think that I, I really hate to say, um, ours is, is the best or ours is better than anyone. I think, um, you know, really it comes down to the customer's needs and budget as to what, uh, they're, they're looking for. And that's where I also start when somebody comes to me and says, Hey, we're looking at a program. What do you think we should get? And I tell them all the time, first of all, define, define your mission. What do you want to do? And then look at the products from there. What do you think, uh, do you have an opinion on what one offers the best value? Obviously, I would say the advanced, and, and I'm not just saying that as a, as a DJI employee. Uh, I, I would say because of the small platform, the uh, the capabilities we have, whether it be flight time, the sensing, uh, you know, with, with the air sense, or whether it be with uh, uh, just our collision avoidance sensors and things like that, uh, and then price point. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, I do think, I, I'm, I'm constantly sought for uh, public safety uh, for or public safety constantly seeks for me, my opinion, not everybody in public safety. I'm not that wonderful, um, but they're always asking me when I'm out there uh, mating with them about an indoor solution. And that's where, um, you know, I've been seeing some some uh, good ones from Brink. Um, you know, we have the many in the air two that are being utilized um uh, but um for indoor but after that um you know majority of missions are outdoor and that's why i keep going back to i, I really feel like we've we've got a good drone in the advance but uh, i'm always looking forward to what comes next even from competition and, and I, I love to see what our competition are able to innovate and come up with out there 
we'll talk about the competition in a minute. Uh, I <laughs> I want to bring uh, I want to switch gears a little bit. Uh, last year and, and maybe the year before as well, uh, DJI had a bit of a rough path uh, patch because of well I'm going to call them geopolitical decisions. Uh, do you think that what's happening in the U.S. or what happened in the U.S. it seems like it's quieted down a little bit had an impact on DJI headquarters in China and their decisions to continue investing maybe in the American market and especially the American public safety market because that feels like the market that's been hit the most with these decisions. You know, uh, uh, obviously when we became a political target for a lot of reasons that I feel were um, not justifiable. Um, it, it does cause you to take pause and 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 I think from the DJI aspect, it was, you know, we're trying to do um, something for the good of humanity. Um, you know, DJI, as everyone knows, started out actually just making a drone that people could go out and take better pictures and videos. Um, and we're surprised when people like uh, me and my department and others took those drones and adapted it to public safety uses. And, and continued today with some of the consumer drones to do that. So it was, I know, um, you know, for the decision makers uh, at our headquarters, it was it was kind of tough to figure out why are we being targeted for, you know, when we're trying to do good. Um, I, I, I don't necessarily think it, it broke the resolve to continue that mission of, you know, we're, we're trying to help humanity, especially in, in America. And proof of that was when Romeo and I were able to um, be a part of the disaster relief program where, uh, you know, which, you know, here again, we were doing something for good, uh, uh, trying to help. And it became a political target um, uh, for, for nonsensical reasons, again, um, and I think we'll, we've seen that some of the people that, that led the charge against that program as a, uh, as a political tool uh, have in themselves shown their character and lack of integrity, I think. Um, so, you know, I think, um, you know, anytime something like that happens, any company is going to try and make some have to be making some hard decisions as to how to proceed. Uh, but I was, was very glad to see again, like I said, with not just disaster relief uh, program, but the introduction of other products that, that we held our resolve that we're not doing anything wrong. We're here to, to provide solutions and products to our customers to save lives. Um, however that may be through, you know, inspections that you're not sending a human to do uh, to active public safety response. So I think um, that's been great to, to see the support I've gotten um, since Romeo, uh, as I say, often abandoned me. Um, uh, um, yeah, I talked to him just this morning. Romeo is just such a great guy. And uh, but I'll still say he abandoned me. But uh, the support I've gotten from headquarters to continue that mission and, and stay out there to, to find out what the needs are for public safety. Um, because uh, one of the other things that I will say is that it was for me personally great to hear is to hear from the agencies that we support and that I'm able to interact with say, you know, your drone made a difference. Uh, we've had several that have said, if, if we hadn't had a drone, we would have had an officer get, get hurt or killed. Or if we hadn't had a drone, uh, we wouldn't have been able to get this subject to uh, to surrender peacefully, and it didn't turn into an officer-involved shooting, uh, which to me is is wonderful because there we've we've again saved another life. And then also to hear them say themselves, "Look, we've gone through. You know, we're smart enough to know how to mitigate um, data security risks or evaluate. Um, you know what the the geopolitical issues are and at the end of the day say you know what there is no issues these this equipment is helping us out in our mission and um 
you know, that's, that's who I'm there for. And that's what I'm always glad to hear from. Awesome. Um, Otel recently launched the Dragonfish fixed wing VTOL drone. Um, Otirian has been working on a similar platform as well. Does DJI plan to launch a fixed wing drone at some point in the future? Well, um, the official answer I unfortunately always have to give is we, we don't speak to uh, products that uh, may be coming out in the future in R&D, but uh, I will give you my personal opinion is I really hope that, that we take a serious look at this as a need by public safety. Um, and, and and it's one that I relay back to R&D uh, quite often. Um, you know, I, I really, I've got the chance uh, recently to see uh, Autels. Um, I haven't seen what Octarian has just yet, but um, I, I have seen um, and talked to Romeo on a couple of occasions about it. And I think they're, they're both really good platforms. Um, my, my only concern caution is um, right now the pricing is out of a lot of public safety's hands. Um, and when, whenever somebody can bring to market a product like that, that can meet the needs of public safety's limited budgets and, and shrinking budgets due to a number of reasons, you know, including uh, the pandemic. Um, I, I, I think you will see, you do see, it kind of goes back to the tethered question. Something that can have a longer flight time and, and loiter over an area longer with a good sensor package is very needed. And VTOL, I've been looking at for, for years, uh, even before coming to DJI, I was hoping somebody would uh, come up with a VTOL solution. So that's a, that's a great question. And um, I really hope that we do see more of them, even from DJI. Yeah, I do as well. And, you know, you said earlier you love competition. We recently had Randall Warness, um, as you know. Yeah. Uh, is, <laughs> you already know who he is. Um, do you oh, think yeah. this positions um, Otel as a credible um, competitor to DJI, given his passion? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I actually, um, Randall's a great guy. I got to know him um, Actually, he was one of the first, if not the first, uh, person from DJI I met. Um, and um, right. so, yeah, Randall, I think, uh, brings uh, a lot of good experience and knowledge um, of, of public safety in the market to Autel. And, and I would say, yeah, they, they, they have, in my view, have been for a while a, a, a serious, incredible uh, competitor to DJI and, and others. And I think... Um, bringing, you know, Randall coming over and then, of course, also bringing over John McBride um, gives them a good, solid foundation for, for improving the market. Um, so um, I, I I was excited for Randall uh, and, and John. I hate, hated to see, um, you know, their former companies lose them because uh, they were uh, and are out there doing such a great job. But uh, I'm looking for great things out of them. Uh, in the future so wish them all the best of luck yeah absolutely so kind of a, fo a follow-up question on this you know uh, hotel has had an interesting strategy there they hired an american ceo uh, they are a chinese company very much like dji do you think there is any benefit to dji to doing something similar and bringing not only bringing american leadership but also put them more in the spotlight randall has been very uh, open about the fact that he wants to be public about what they're doing and take on some questions and, and have this leadership role being very public uh, so do you think dji could benefit in having more american leadership because we don't really see american leadership i mean you and and brandon you you're pretty much the the american face of the of the company well um uh... I mean, really, with me and Brendan and and, and some others, uh, what else do you need? I mean, uh, <laughs> I know that's kind of arrogant, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I think, you know, I, I would say, um, for one thing, DJI being such a global company and, and uh, North America is a very important market, yes, but um, not our 
unfortunately not our only market. Um, and so uh, having American leadership is good, mostly because of, of their ability to, to communicate back to uh, headquarters uh, what the, the changes in the market are and what the direction the market is, is looking to grow into. Uh, what the needs of the customers are. And, um, you know, it can be also valuable for even those of us, the employees, to to have somebody that can better communicate the, the wishes and wants of headquarters in the direction the company wants to go. Um, mm -hmm. But but I would say, you know, um, there, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, DJI and, and um you know, always people want to look at our, our internal management and, and, and what, what makes DJI tick. And I'd, I'd say right now, um, you know, I have good communication with a lot of uh, headquarters to figure out what it is that they want as uh, our goals and our mission here. So, uh, you know, while it, it, it can only help, uh, I think we're doing good. Uh, where we're at right now. But then again, we're also pretty well established in a lot of our processes. And um, I think one of the things that Autel is still doing is still, um, you know, from what I see as an outsider, uh, still learning their way in the U.S. market to some degree. And I think um, that's where Randall uh, is going to be able to help and, as well as John. Uh, last week, we spoke to Charles Werner, director of Drone Responders, mm -hmm. and he mentioned, um, and obviously there have been a number of drone missions um, in to assess the damage and look for survivors after the collapse of the condominium building in Surfside, Florida. Do you know if any DJI drones were used? And if so, um, which models and for which missions? You know, I, I honestly, I don't know. Um, I know that um, it, almost immediately drones were in the air and being used. Um, I've, I've not tried to reach out to anyone operating there simply from the standpoint they're, they're in until uh, really yesterday, they were still in a response phase and looking for survivors. And I didn't want to uh, having been involved in numerous incidents like that, I know that uh, people calling up, offering assistance while while appreciated, uh, can get in that way of that operation. And so, uh, I've I've held back for now to to find out uh, what the what's being used and things like that. Um, so, unfortunately, no, I apologize, can't answer that specific question. Yeah, no worries. Ask. We, we have a question uh, that's maybe a little closer to home. Uh, we know that Texas is at, is at the forefront of using drones uh, within their first re responders community. Can you give us some, some great examples of how drones are being used in Texas? And can you also perhaps uh, help us understand why it is that Texas is so advanced uh, compared to, uh, to many of the other states in the United States? Sure. And, and actually, if I back up just a second, just to add on to, to my answer to that last question. Um, one thing about me is, is um, I, I, while I love to see DJI products out there, I, I love to see just the fact that a drone is being used, um, no matter who, whose product it is, in a situation like that. Because, that, again, that, that helps other departments be able to go to decision makers and say, look, they are making a difference. You know, these aren't toys. These are tools. And they're making a difference in an incident. So that's I am that's where I was. Well, I don't know exactly whose product. I I am glad to see that it was uh, the technology was being integrated so well into it. Um, so uh, another good question. Yeah. Um, as for Texas, um, you know, I, I don't know exactly. Can't pinpoint why we were so successful uh, and have been in in Texas. Um, I, other than I think maybe in some respects our uh, our citizens' view on it, we we were able to uh, 
to key in early on how to make the approach to them and and sell to them you know that they're they're we're not out here to to be spying on you we're out here to help uh, keep you safe and i think in other regions other areas they met with the uh a more forceful view of privacy concerns and in texas um obviously we had a lot of the privacy concerns but um i think one of the things that helped us is our legislature jumped on it very early on uh, creating the texas privacy act um and then um you know we had a lot of regional teams develop ours uh, was one of the first in dallas fort worth area um that i'm i was very um very proud to be a part of uh, early on in that our North Texas Public Safety UAS, or excuse me, unmanned response team now uh, formed. And, and that formed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and became a, a number of police and fire agencies, which I'll also make a quick side note. I have not seen anything integrate police and fire as well as much as, as uh, drones have. And so from there, um, you know, we also had uh, Quick Kessler at Austin developing a regional team. And then, um, you know, Brandon Carr down in uh, Pearland in the Houston area, uh, getting the Gulf Coast unmanned team together. Um, that, that, those teams have been phenomenal, not just in our ability to respond around the state, but share knowledge, share practices, help develop practices. Um, you know, I was sitting on a committee that was developing the standards for uh, the state to be, um, you know what what you had to have to be a deployable asset for the state as a as a drone pilot and a team and um we just had a lot more collaboration than i've seen occurring across the country in other states and regions and um i i hope we've been a model for that um you know um i apologize because i went back i forgot some of the questions i think it was uh, what types of drones emissions is that right yeah, um, basically uh, some some examples of how drones are being used in Texas and um, the other part you already explained about why Texas is so much uh, ahead of the other states. Yeah, so we've also seen um, just because, uh, you know, everything's big in Texas, right? Well, the state itself is just so large. And, and as a result, we have such a large mix of terrain from um, West Texas, where it is desert, um, scrub, tumbleweed, cactus, to the, the northern panhandle where it's plains, to where I'm at, where, uh, believe it or not, I have trees and grass and, and all over. And then you get to East Texas, the Piney Woods, South Texas, the go coastal region. So you have all these different dynamic environments for incidents to occur. Um, so from South Texas, we, we have obviously the hurricanes and uh, the abilities for, for drones to be um, utilized as a responder, uh, as well as afterwards for damage assessment, things like that. Tornadoes, we've uh, actually two weeks before I retired, we had a tornado go through Dallas and we were flying, um, the team was flying immediately that night. I was in my uh, emergency operations center at the time uh, still monitoring we had more weather threats coming in so i couldn't uh, go to to help that night but the next day going out and doing damage assessment mapping uh, for dallas fire um, we've seen wildfire uh, obviously um, not to the extent that uh, california was utilizing uh, and and some of the teams were able to go up there in california but then um, also in Texas, the, the flooding events that we have been having over the last several years. Um, so uh, that that is possibly also another reason why we have seen so much integration in Texas for for drones is that the the various disasters that we unfortunately have. Yeah, we'll have uh, Coit actually next week and Adam Johnson oh. as well uh, on the show talking yeah. about, uh, yeah, those those two are, are two of my customers and I talk to them all the time and they're, they've just been great at, at what they do. So it's great to see the cool. two agencies or several agencies, you know, working together and we'll be asking them a lot of questions about how they did that. So 
Coit is um, just a really great guy. Yeah. Yes, he is. Can't say nothing yes, good about him. Yep. And I, I want to shift to uh, drones a little bit, uh, shift gears a little bit. The the Phantom 4 is kind of uh, the the last drone that we've seen with a mechanical shutter, which, as we all know, is really good for uh, everything from modeling buildings, accident scenes, structures, anything that's needed, especially for public safety. Um, at the moment, the, the P4P is getting close to end of life and maybe maybe another few years, but we haven't really seen any other drones with that kind of uh, feature. I know you can't talk about future releases, but is this something that is on the list of customers that they want to see in future releases that, that maybe when you talk to customers, that's something that you hear? Yes, there are. Um, you know, when, when you look at the surveying mapping, um, uh, needs of uh, our customers because um, obviously we're not just public safety um, but then also to be more specific to public safety for uh, accident investigation to uh, disaster um, that it is important that, that um, we look at being able to integrate that into future products and especially ones that if we can we have the resources to do it, to um, make products specifically for, again, those use cases, whether it be um, surveying mapping. Um, I would even say beyond that, it's not just surveying mapping. When we look at the consumer side, I know we do have photographers, uh, aerial photographers that, that ask for uh, that capability uh, a lot. And so, uh, it, it is one of the recommendations that I, I pass on uh, quite often to headquarters to consider when we're developing new products. Good. So what I hear you say is we'll see that on the Mavic 3, right? <laughs> Mavic 16, is that what you said? Or the <laughs> Mavic 23? <laughs> I know Haya here. Has been, yeah, yeah Haya is looking for the scoop. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you? I mean, it. I see a trend where things um, seem to be moving um, towards more, like a more compact airframe. Do you think the Mavic platform, and this is just a matter of opinion, do you think the Mavic platform is going to replace the Phantom? You know. I've not had, honestly, any internal discussion along those lines, but um, I, I would I would say that that may be with, you know, again, with, with what's happened over the last year with the pandemic uh, and going back to some other questions, uh, our resources have reduced, um, you know, like a lot of uh, other companies, we've had to um, respond to the challenges um, of, of that. And so... Um, deciding what resources R&D puts into a new product uh, is, is a challenge right now. So I would say our focus, while maybe not replace, our focus is more on the uh, probably the Mavic platforms to be able to bring that small platform uh, greater capability to, to the customers. Um, not that we would probably walk away from the phantom line because i i my, myself personally still still think it's a it's a great product a great a aircraft and and i do have uh customers i talk to that, that that are afraid that it will be a line that we 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 don't continue but um i, I think i i'm optimistic that we will in some way continue to look into that awesome the um, you, you've seen a lot of different programs across the country, and we talked about Texas and, and how well they've been doing uh, integration. What are some other successful drone programs that you've seen across the country that people should be looking into maybe if they're planning to start a new drone program as a, as a reference? I would, and, and I hope this is along the lines of what you're asking, is uh, I'd really like to see people take more time and invest in STEM, STEAM education. Um, I, it's something I've, I've got a pretty good passion about. I have a friend that is in uh, Fort Smith uh, that's a teacher uh, at a high school, a uh, couple of high schools there. He does their, their uh, program. Um, 
And then I've been involved with one here where I live, uh, as well as helping uh, with one out uh, in Galena Park, California. Um, you know, the reason why that is my passion is, or one of my passions right now is that's the future. And, and I don't just mean future pilots. I mean, the future is who's going to develop the next uh, piece of technology for drones. Who's going to advance the industry? Who's going to write the codes in the future? You know, at, at some point, we're going to need um, better software and, and remove more of the, the human aspect of, of the operation away. And, and who is going to develop those things? So uh, when I'm out talking to students, uh, that's, that's the thing I'm pushing to them is, don't look at just being a drone pilot as an option in the future. Um, there's a lot of, of um, you know, this is still a very new technology. I have to remind myself all the time that we're still an emerging technology. We're still new. We're still progressing. And, and that's why I think it's very important that now we look to uh, the next generation and we start building them up now. Um, so that, to me, you know, we, we, we've made a lot of progress on the uh, fire police, uh, you know, and search and rescue um, uses. Um, but the other I would say is also in the, the safety and risk mitigation of, um, you know, everything from construction to inspections. Um, those are the programs I'd also like to see uh, grow and continue as well, because again, we're breaking those chains of events by sending a robot, not a human. So I hope those are, awesome along the lines of your question. Hey, hey, you know what? It wasn't, but uh, you answered a much better question that I didn't ask. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> that was. Yeah, that, I'm glad you brought STEM. I think STEM is so important for, for the future. And we've. this is something that I've been uh, trying to do my whole life is get kids involved in aviation because, yeah. uh, well, because we, we need the next generation uh, to be interested in doing these things and, and, uh, and not doing other things, quite frankly. So yeah, I, I thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. And maybe to... Uh, to answer your question a little better, um, bring it back to more what you were looking for is the regional team concept, not just an yeah. individual program. Is that more along the lines of what you're asking? No, uh, I, I was maybe thinking of, uh, is there a drone program out there that you think is doing is doing very well? Um, I know we, we always hear about Chula Vista, so maybe, maybe oh, okay. something along these lines, like an, another yes. drone program that you think is doing great. Oh, okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. More. Absolutely. There's one that's recently come to my attention that I am just, um, I'm awed by, and that is Weber County. Uh, Weber County has got this amazing program going on, and they've, they've gotten a lot of um, really good saves recently, that, including, as I understand, one 70-year-old uh, gentleman that was stuck waist deep in snow, um, and they were using... You know what we've used for quite a while on public safety side pinging a cell phone and the cell phone as i understand was pinging a canyon over and luckily with the drone they were able to find him very rapidly and save his life um that was a very time critical uh, mm -hmm. instance that the traditional methods were failing they've got a, a, a myriad of other uh responses uh, that we've been able to to uh, hear about from them and have put on our uh, drone rescue map um, that we have that's that's uh, live and updating uh, almost every day. Um, the other thing though about them that is so great to see is that it is a group of all volunteers. So they are attached to the, the sheriff's department but they're all volunteers and they are multidisciplined um, they have a dive rescue team, water rescue team. They have mounted uh, and, and uh, ground search team. So they have a very multidisciplined team. And drones have become the core of it all. And um, much like what I've seen with Houston, as Houston has been developing a... Um, a response team that's an all hazards response team with a wildland strike team uh, or task force, a water rescue task force, 
um, what have you, they've, they've made drones the core of, of them. In other words, drones will respond with any of the uh, task forces that go out. So too has Weber County um, with their, their, their teams. And so I think that's, that's another great model for agencies to look to. Oh, that's awesome. Great, great response. I, I hope people go and look up what these uh, agencies are doing. I think that's, yeah. that's critical. So earlier today, Wayne, I was looking at your LinkedIn profile to make sure that I got your, your title correct and everything. Uh, <laughs> but I also saw that you are now an Airward uh, judge. Can you tell us a little bit more about yeah. this nonprofit organization and, and what your role is there? You know, that was really exciting to, to be a part of. Um, that is a very new organization. Uh, that, that this was their inaugural year. Um, but what I really loved was their approach to it um, and, and how they want to make uh, their awards um, mean something and be significant and really point to uh, what people are doing uh, to further um, you know, the use of drones, further the industry, and, and really make an impact on humanity um, as well as, you know, studying. I mean, uh, we, you know, we, we've heard about, um, uh, you know, the, the research with whales. Um, yeah. uh, what was it? Snotbot, if I remember right. But yeah. uh, to, to, to be a part of that in, in the judging and to get a better view of, of these programs, sometimes a lot of it was from their own perspective on what they're doing. And that was great because I was able to see their passion for what they're doing. Um, and so Air Awards, uh, really, I was I was really excited and humbled to be a part of that because it was able to, uh, with a lot of integrity built into their judging system, um, be able to give recognition to programs out there that uh, are making those differences. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to next year. Hopefully I get to be a part of it next year and um yeah. and, and see who 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 gets judged next year yeah i think it's awesome i think anything that we can do to to bring drones and, and how they benefit society to the foreground i think is uh, is a good initiative so uh, i'm a fan <laughs> oh yes that's part of, yes that's part of the reason why we do this show as well is to highlight people that are doing good yeah. things with drones so um, you know, we always have a question every week for our guests, and uh, and it's especially a good one when they represent a drone manufacturer. Uh, what's your favorite drone? And it doesn't have to be DJI. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will say, and, and not just because I work at DJI, my favorite is still uh, the Inspire One. Uh, it was just such a workhorse that, that, that I right up until... The day I retired, I had one in my chief's buggy and, um, you know, it's just such a workhorse for, for the capabilities, um, you know, the camera, the flight, I, I mean, um, the endurance that it had. I, I don't remember, honestly, how many flight hours I had on it, uh, but, you know, uh, I, I did donate it to the department when I left so that they would still have, it was my personal one, but donated it to the department when I left so that they had a, a good aircraft to fly. Um, you know, so uh, that one, I think if we could get all manufacturers to go back, take a step back and look at the versatility and endurance of that drone, um, you know, that uh, that was a, a, a great, not only was it one of the ones that, you know, changed the face of what these can be used for, but it just did so much to so many. So that's my favorite um, drone. Um, oh, goodness. I'm trying to think of a fun one, too. I'd say, you know, Tiny Whoop is pretty fun to, to fly. I just don't have those skills myself just yet to keep it uh, without smacking it into the ground. I'm a good pilot. <laughs> I'm just not that good. <laughs> it's a different set of skills. Yes. Yes. It's, uh... It's interesting that you mentioned the Inspire One because I've, uh, in the years that I've covered the drones, I've heard a lot of people uh, still be very enthusiastic and then be loyal fans uh, to the Inspire One. I mean, I think the people that have flown those devices, they, they yeah, it did something for them, obviously. So, oh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, but Wayne, thank you so much uh, for being on the show this week. I think we pretty much went through all our questions. And I think also that your experience as a fire chief and a DJI uh, director of public safety is invaluable. Uh, we appreciate your role as a drone proponent. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for being on the show this week. Thank you. I'm, it's uh, an honor and, uh, um, and a pleasure. So thank you guys very much. Awesome. Thank you, Chief. Well, if you... If you enjoy and appreciate our Pixel Drone Show, uh, please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and share our show, please, with your friends and family. Uh, having a larger audience and a bigger reach uh, helps us tremendously, and it will definitely help us to, to make the show even more professional and better in the future. Uh, thank you for watching and listening for today's conversation with Wayne Baker from DJI, and we'll have a new episode for you coming next Tuesday. Thank you, guys.